Here we are in the Aura Parental Controls app. Let's take a look at a few new features launching soon. As a quick reminder, we have two goals that we're trying to achieve with Aura Parental Controls. First, we're helping parents set guardrails for the content that their kids access online. And secondly, we're supporting parents to help their kids build healthy online habits by setting and enforcing screen time limits. With the new features we're launching, there's been a big focus on making it easier for parents to achieve these goals. First, we've introduced a preview mode. Now parents can get started exploring the features immediately after they enroll. Parents no longer need to link a child's device as the first step. We've also moved the important information so that it's front and center on the child's profile screen, and we're calling that the dynamic dashboard. So let's take a look at the app. First, we'll add a child. So by, we start by clicking that family icon on the lower bar, and then there's the person icon in the upper right of the family screen. We click that, and then we select add child. We'll be prompted to provide the first name, last name, and the birthday of the child. And then we can add a photo. All right, and now Noah has been added and we can go to Noah's profile. Here we are on Noah's profile screen, and we're now automatically in preview mode. Preview mode is indicated by the navy blue bar at the top of the screen, as well as by the grayed out information in the parental controls feature tiles. Since we haven't yet linked Noah's phone or tablet, we're seeing placeholder information for each of the parental controls features. We're also seeing on Noah's profile screen, the new dynamic dashboard. Here, the most important information about the child's online activities lives on this screen. And now let's take a look at each feature in this preview mode. First, we have Time Online. Time Online clearly answers the question many parents have, how much time has my child spent online today? We see three hours and 25 minutes with one hour and 35 minutes remaining. Again, that's placeholder information until we go ahead and link Noah's device. Tapping on preview gives a breakdown of the apps the child has used and the time spent on each app. Again, it's preview mode, so we're seeing that placeholder information, but this gives you a sense of how Aura Parental Controls provides a simple to view summary of the apps and sites visited. In this case, YouTube, TikTok, and Snapchat. Next in the dynamic dashboard is the blocked activity card. The blocked activity card gives a chronological list of the blocked apps and sites that have been blocked from the child's device that day. Next are the tiles for content filtering and time limits. Let's look at content filtering first. One of the great things about preview mode is that even though we haven't yet linked Noah's device, any changes that we make to, content, to the content filtering settings will be applied once we do go ahead and link Noah's phone or tablet. So I'll click on content filtering. So first, at the top of the screen, we see the child and teen default filter settings. The child filter is more restrictive and the teen filter is less restrictive. When I added Noah to my account, you recall, I had to input Noah's birthday or use that information to apply the child filter setting. In this case, Noah is 11 and that child filter is applied and I wanna keep the child filter as the, as the default and I even wanna add some additional restrictions. So below those child and teen default filter settings, we see three tabs, apps, websites, and categories. These offer a few different ways for parents to customize the content filters. One way to think about these different options is that the apps and websites tabs easily allow parents to filter the known issues, meaning the apps and websites the parents are familiar with and know that they want to block. In, in slight contrast, we have the categories tab as that third tab, and that offers very broad restrictions so that parents can easily block the unknown issues, meaning the harmful or inappropriate sites the parent might not know by name, but 
can rely on Aura to be the expert to block everything associated with a particular category. So first, I'll click on the Apps tab and I'll scroll through the list. I'm going to block Hulu and Max since I know there are some shows on those, uh, on those apps that I'm not comfortable with. And I'll save my settings. By clicking on the middle tab, Websites, I can enter a specific URL and I can choose to block that URL from Noah's devices. So here you can see that I've added in the website gamespot.com. I can add additional URLs by simply clicking on Add Website and typing it in and hitting Save. So the final tab in content filtering is categories. We can think about categories as an umbrella of protection that allows parents to restrict hundreds of sites and apps associated with that category. And they can do that with just a single tap on the category. So for a parent that's really looking for a very restrictive uh, content filtering setting, categories is a useful, is a useful tool. So as I scroll through the list of categories, we can see all kinds of options and I'm going to choose to block online games. All right, so now that content filtering is all set up, I can go take a look at time limits. Time limits allows parents to set a daily limit as well as time limits for specific apps and categories. If I click on set a daily limit and add a limit, I can see that no limit is currently set but I can choose to set, let's say, a two hour time limit for Noah. But if I feel like Noah should have more time on the weekends, I can toggle that same limit every day button. And now I can customize the amount of time for each day. So on Sundays, I'll adjust that to be three hours. And on Saturday, I'll adjust the daily limit to four hours. Just below that daily limit, I can set a time limit for, for different apps and categories. So as I scroll through this list, I can click on Disney Plus and I can set a time limit for that particular app. And I will also set a time limit on Hulu. That will be one hour. So now I have these daily time limits for specific apps in addition to the total daily limit. Now, as I've mentioned, I still haven't linked Noah's device, but once I link his phone or tablet, these settings will be active. I will not need to re-enter this information. So before we wrap up, let's take a quick look at the profile of Molly. Molly's device has been linked so we can see her active profile. So we've, again, we've got that time online summary card showing us that she spent an hour online today and has two hours left. And if I click in, I can see the breakdown of her time online. She spent 30 minutes on YouTube and her time limit on YouTube has been reached. She spent 20 minutes on Netflix, but she still has an hour and 40 minutes remaining. It's also worth calling out that we've moved the pause the internet button. So now if I wish to pause internet access on Molly's iPad, I can simply click the pause button on her profile and then click again to unpause. So it's a really easy way to pause and unpause the internet on the child's device. So that's the quick tour of the new features for Aura Parental Controls.